Yo, what's up? <laughs> what's up, guys? So today, I got a video for you guys because I have been getting so many questions on my stream about uh, my keybinds, my macros, add-ons, everything. So today, we're going to do a quick video on what I do. Quick disclaimer. Personally, I'm not a big fan of copying other people's keybinds because not everything works for every... Not the same uh, keybinds work for everybody, right? And the keybinds don't make the player. Um, you could have a super inefficient keybinds, but just be an amazing player and makes it work, and then vice versa. You could have, you know, really efficient keybinds and macros, but you can't put it all together. So take it with a grain of salt. Maybe you could take a few tips, um, or maybe you want to take some ideas uh, from what I do and use it for yourself to help you out. So, and then um, also for a lot of these, I actually use a mouse called the Corsair Scimitar mouse. So it is one of those MMO mouses with 12 buttons on it. Just so you know kind of where I'm getting at when I use most of my keybinds because 90% of my keybinds are actually all on my mouse. I rarely use my keyboard, ironically. But let's get right into it. So here we are. So first we'll go over keybinds. So for keybinds, most of my, my keybinds here you're gonna see you say num. It's all just because I macroed my mouse uh, to be the numpad. So for example, num, if I press numpad one, it does one. If I press one on the mouse, it does one, which is rejuve, okay? So these are kind of key ones that I've just come up with over time. And a big recommendation I would make when it comes to for any class is keep your similar spells on similar binds. So like if you're playing, um, you know, a druid and a shaman, maybe like something similar that's like, is like bark skin and astral ship, right? Those are two like wall defensives. So you should keep them on the same bind so you can get better at using those same type of key binds. Like I usually keep my big offensive cooldowns on the same binds, defensive cooldowns on the same binds, interrupts, um, and then combo point generators or, you know, some sort of generating ability and then a spender ability. And then I also try to keep my, my species on the same, same abilities as well. So for me, if you want to look in this order, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one through nine on my mouse. That's what I use. I just that's just kind of my rotational buttons that I'm pressing most frequently. Then I have R for efflorescence. This is something I don't really press. I honestly just ran out of keybinds on my mouse, so I started using them for uh, using some some buttons on my keyboard and just trying to get used to them. Um, this is eleven on my mouse, which is usually what I put my like. Um, I always put like my healing defensives, like uh, what other things? Yes, yeah, so I don't remember. But uh, Iron Bark is what I use for that because I mean it's a short cooldown, and I and then I also have Overgrowth here on End, which is Shift One. Not the best keybind. I would actually try to keep these two somewhere close together because you are using these together very frequently. Um, so again, yeah, so I, if you if you feel like you're using a pair, of, you know binds or two different buttons like all the time together maybe it might be good to keep them nearby so you can hit them you know quickly when it comes to my top row this is just control one two three four five six seven eight nine um this is control zero control uh, 11 or control sorry control 10 control 11 and then control 12. so same thing i just keep it consistent between all my characters the only reason why i don't have zero uh, 10 here is because for whatever reason, I got used to 10 being my like ghost wolf and my travel form. So that's just what it kind of stuck with. So that's where that is. And then that's why I have control 10 here, which is wild charge. So kind of like my, my mobility buttons on the same bind. So like all I have to do is press 10 and then press control 10 to leap. For example, if I want to wild charge leap. Um, and then onto my cooldowns. My cooldowns are a little bit all over the place. Um, I wish I probably organized these a little bit better. But um, just, I'll give you a rundown. This is control one on my mouse, or uh, alt one on my mouse. So I use pretty much all of my 12 buttons on my mouse, as well as um, the control modifiers and alt modifi modifiers and shift modifiers of my mouse. So pretty much every single bind is on my mouse. So these are kind of been a little bit all over the place between, you know, control, shift, and, uh, or not, well, these are most of my, my control ones here, but shift, alt, and shift and alt of those binds as well. When it comes to my shifting, so shifting is what uh, a lot of people ask me about because it's different from any class and you, you kind of have a lot more, um, a lot more, you know, bars to worry about. 
But what I personally do, this is what I do. You don't have to do this. People, not a lot of people, I don't think, do this if they play Druid, but this is what I do and it works for me, is I don't use any extra bars. I keep everything on the same bar. So for example, if I'm in bear form or cat form, I can't press rejuve. But what I do is just cancel form. So cancel form is a macro. Uh, when I get into my macros, I'll bring it up too, but cancel form is just slash cancel form. And what that does is it just cancels your form. Whatever you're in, if I could hit, you know, cat form and then cancel form. Three, uh, bear form, cancel form, child form, cancel form. And I could just do that all over. Um, so what I do is I just will, you shit, I'll keep my binds the same. So again, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, going, or going all the way up. Cat form, bear form, the same thing. And if I need to heal, I press cancel form and then I can heal. So probably not the most efficient to be honest, but it just works for me. And if it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, you can find something else. Some people I know use like the scrolling for shifting and stuff like that and different, whatever works for you. Just practice whatever it is and then you'll get, you'll get it down well. Um, as it comes for my shifting, so what I use to shift is one, two, three on my keyboard. So my movement keys, I still use, um, you know, the normal default ones, Q, W, E, A, S, D. Um, those are the ones, binds I use still for moving. And for shifting, I want to, I always keep something right nearby. So I use two for cat form, three for bear form, and one for cancel form. All right, and then like I said before, travel form is on 10 on my mouse. Kind of strange, but it just worked for me. So that's just what I kept with it. So. Um, this is one one thing I would re recommend if you do not have a cancel form macro get it and get used to it It is so freaking useful especially when it comes to being an R druid and, and having to um, Deal with like slows and stuff Being able to can't like be in a form cancel form and then shift right into another form is so efficient It's also really good because now that you know uh, you have hibernate that druids can hibernate you in cat form or bear form or even hunters now have scare beast. So having that cancel form to shift out really quickly so you don't get feared or slept, super huge. Okay, so I would keep the and I would keep that cancel form macro close to your shifting bind so that you can always shift out really quickly. Because you'll see me playing all the time where unfortunately you can't see it on my trophy G C D here, but you see when I use cat and um, and bear form, but you don't really see when I'm using the cancel form unfortunately. But I'm using it all the time. Literally every time I shift. So whether I'm, you know, I'm in bear form trying to wait for a stun and then I shift out and start healing or cat form. Um, the only thing though I will add with cat form and bear form is I keep a few binds the same here. So the spell, vortex, iron bark, and overgrowth. Okay, so the spell you can use in any form and it'll automatically shift you out and dispel the target. Just because you want to be able to dispel really quickly. Um, that's why I have that there. So it, I could be in any form, cat form, bear form. Uh, if I press that dispel button, it'll dispel no matter who I'm targeting. Um, also, same thing with Iron Bark Overgrowth. These are abilities you need to be pressing quickly. You know, not as urgent as Rejuve or Regrowth, right? So um, I keep those there. So I could be in bear form, I hit Iron Bark, Iron Bark's instantly and shifts me out at the same time. Okay, also the same thing, I, uh, something I actually do personally a lot is Moonfire out of form as well. So like, you know, if I'm in cat form, you'll see me, I'll, you know, I'll be in stealth, I open up on somebody and then I pop out, pop out with Moonfire. And if I'm targeting something, like here, so this thing, if I press, press this, press Moonfire button, it shifts me out as I'm doing it. So a lot of times you'll see me like run in, um, stealth, hit something, and then, you know, instead of shifting and walking away, I'll use Moonfire to kind of, to like kind of start damage and shift at the same time, if that makes sense. Kind of multitasking in that, and you know, putting a priority on the damage, you know how, you know how we do. <laughs> um, so, okay, uh, now to go on to the macros I have, I don't use a lot of macros to be honest. Uh, again, if you don't like using macros, don't use them. If you like using more macros than I do, don't hesitate. It's not gonna, you know, make you a worse player. You can't, won't make you not be able to play like I do just because you, you like different macros. Do whatever works for you. Okay, so, um, I personally just use, use 13 and 14 for trinket slots because if I ever change a trinket, so like if I change this trinket here, you know, to claw or whatever, it'll just automatically shift it on my bar or change it on my bar. I don't have to, you know, click it and drag it. So I use use 13, 14 for your two trinket slots. Um, that's nothing. Cancel form again, really, really important to have that cancel form found. Um, this is another cancel form. Okay, I don't need that. Um, next one, fly. This one's actually really useful. So I'll use my handy dandy partner here to help me out. So this is a slash cancel form slash cast wild charge macro. 
So what this will do will shift you out of form and use your human form while charged, which is a self grip. So if I target my partner, if I target my partner and I press this in a form, let's say I'm like running away in calf form or bear form, let's say I'm, or even another example is like you're coming out of a stun where you might see this used more. If you're coming out of a stun and you need to, you know, grip to your partner to get yourself some more mobility, you can press that 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 uh, macro and it'll just shift you out and bring you to the target immediately. Right. And another quick note on that, it's re you can actually use this really skillfully because you can use it to, um, around LOS or, or not around LOS, disregarding um, where you're facing. So, for example, here, uh, do I have it up? I do. So I could be, what I actually do sometimes is I'll try to juke somebody out by running one direction, press the macro, it'll grip me that way and I can start running the other way. Like for me personally, I know that my partner is right behind me, so I can run one way, grip the other way, knowing I'll be that way. You can also use it to get um, get up, up on ZZ axis. So if you jump off and you want to grip up to your partner, you can grip up and you know go up there, or you can grip up to a pet. Um, any of that would work out. It's a really useful macro in that sense, and like again, does it doesn't ignore ignores where you're facing. It'll always work. Okay, uh, next one. Don't need that, don't need that, don't need, these are weird, okay. Kind of useless. Um, cancel thorns macro, this is something I use pretty frequently. It's just slash cancel or a thorns. All that does is cancels your thorns. So what actually, what I, what, the reason I use this is mostly, you don't really actually, this is pretty much the only reason you would use it These uh, this anymore is um, karma. I did use it for, you know, spell reflect for warriors. If like, I felt like I was gonna die but for karma, you can force out karma sometimes really easily by pressing thorn. I'm not in war mode right now, can't actually put it on. Um, but anyway, you can press thorns and you can use this button, which I just use alt of that button. So this is control three. I use alt three for cancel thorns, so it's quick. And I can take the thorns off immediately. So if you ever, if I ever pop thorns and, I, and then he pops karma or it probably just pops karma, I will instantly cancel it off so that I don't hurt myself even more. I've used this all the time just to force it out for no reason. Like I'll be at, you know, 90% health and then I press thorns and the guy's like, oh, yo, I don't press karma in that. I'm gonna take him down. And you just cancel it off and now the karma is completely useless, right? Now you don't have, now they don't have a big defense, their biggest defensive. So definitely useful in that sense. Um, and the next one, these are the only last two here. Actually, actually no, I got a few more. But uh, target party member one and two. The only reason why I don't use the ones in um, like the actual Ebind section is because it'll target pets. Like if you like, for example, because I, I use scroll for my targeting, if I were to over scroll, it would target target party member one. And then if I kept scrolling, it would start targeting, uh, where does music come from? Sure. Uh, it would start targeting their pet, which is was really annoying, especially with locks and DKs and stuff like that. So party member one, party member two, I used to scroll up for party member one, scroll down if I had a third person in my group for party member three. All right, so that's how I use my targeting for those macros. And to, to target myself, I just deselect. So for example, if I'm targeting my druid here and I'm healing them, if I want to start healing myself now, I just click the screen anywhere and then start healing and then just keep going. Um, that's just kind of what I've got used to doing. And if you, if there is an option in your interface, I believe, sticky targeting right here. So if you have this selected, you actually can't do that. So like, for example, here, if I'm targeting, if I click here, it doesn't deselect, right? So if you want to try this out, you got to make sure you deselect sticky targeting. That's what I do. Works for me. Doesn't work for everybody else. Um, yeah, that's that one. And then kind of the only other things I use is focus clone. So just slash cast at focus cyclone. So I use it for my binds. I use control five for cyclone. And then I use alt five for focus clone. Um, these are, this is my drink macro. To be honest, I just copied and pasted this from somebody. I don't know. I can, I'll, I'll put these up. I'll, I'll put these down in the description. But uh, this is just my drink macro. You can put whatever water you type, whatever water type you have in this line here. Hibernate, focus hibernate. So, you know, control four is my hibernate. I use alt four for my control hibernate or focus hibernate. Um, I have a target self innervate because innervate you can, you know, you can, no, oh, right. I just use the macro. Innervate you can use on other healers. So what I would use is because, especially if I was targeting, like let's say I was targeting my DPS and I would, you press Innervate, nothing happens. You have to target yourself. So I made a target party, uh, target equals player Innervate macro. So it would always use it on myself. 
Um, okay, these are kind of for feral and whatnot. And then I also have a focus root. I don't use this that much. I use it more as boomy for if I'm trying to focus root beam somebody. But uh, I don't really use that as uh, as resto. All right, so that's it for the macros. And then last, lastly, um, we'll do we'll do add-ons. All right. So a few add-ons here that are important. I don't need all of these, but I'll just show you the ones that you know people ask about a lot. First one probably be big debuffs or the big debuffs. So that's big debuffs is what shows up on on the the frames. So if you ever see me playing and like my let's say my partner gets hodged, it'll show the big hodge icon here. Or if they if you know if you're a DPS and you're playing with a healer and your healer gets kicked, super useful because you'll see that kick timer here. So you can tell when they're they're if they're kicked, I need to go play defensive, right? Um, and then once it kicks back, I can maybe go back out and do more. But it's super good to be aware about what your teammates, what's happening with your teammates, whether you're a DPS or a healer. Um, so big debuffs kind of helps me notice things a lot easier because it just pops out on the frame. Just an additional thing, people ask me how I make my frames like this. Um, just make sure you have raid style frames. Uh, and then I have all the stuff selected here. I have health remaining selected and then I made them as big as possible. And then you can just lock them, unlock them and put it wherever you want and then lock it again. And then, what else we got? <sighs> These kind of details. Diminish, you don't need... Oh, actually, diminish? Oh, I forgot I do have diminish. So diminish is uh, what you'll see on top here. So I have it like set right up here. And it just shows the DRs on myself. Kind of use... It's pretty useful, mostly for stuns uh, and for polys. So like if I know I'm on stun DR, I'm not as scared. But I know if I'm off stun DR... So if, you, if I get kiddied, it'll, sh it'll show the DR up here on me. And you can kind of adjust that and put it wherever you'd like. But that's one, that one's called Diminish. Fly Plate Buffs is what shows on top of people's heads. So if I were to heal my partner here... Oh, it doesn't show on here. But uh, <laughs> oh, actually, maybe I can put it on one of these guys. Will it show on here? Alright, they die too quick. But anyway, it's what comes above people's heads. So if you ever see me playing... And you see like, you know, and I'll say I'm facing a warrior and then they pop avatar and you see avatar pop above their head or it shows my dots on top of them like rake, moonfire. That one's fly debuffs. Um, I don't know if the Twitch version is updated at this point. It, it's, has, it's been like really weird. So I have a I have like a Google Drive version that I downloaded. Yeah, this is the, this play, regular people is from Twitch, but this fly playlist was from a Google Drive I downloaded like forever ago and I haven't updated it since and it still works. Um, just a side note, you, if you do experience bug, uh, bugs with this, you can download BugSack, which is, it's just, I think it just collects things so you don't get those blue arrows in, on your screen. But, uh, alright, moving on. Uh, Omni CD. So Omni CD is what you, you'll see on the left side of my screen here. I wish I had a picture of this to use, but, um, so if I'm playing with, like, a mage, for example, it'll show Ice Block over here, it'll show Counter Spell, and you can kind of choose what you want to use for that. So, for example... Um, I should have showed it through this. What the heck? I can go to uh, spells, and then I'll, I can click the class that I want. Let's say I'm playing with a, de a death knight. I can pick which spells I want to show. I sh I selected pretty much all the the kicks. So like mind freeze for them, for DKs, disrupt. I had all of them, and then all like the uh, defenses that I would worry about. Like I want to know when my teammate has kick. I know when. I want to know when they have bark skin. I want to know when they have you know survival instincts and so on. So you can kind of go through, see what you like to notice. Uh, pretty much major defensives and kicks I have. Some some classes I do put the offensives on if I want to try to synergize with them. Like lightning lasso is pretty important for me because you know the DRs. Uh, Rose you can put like uh, shadow. Oh, I mean with sub being as uh, the better spec now it might be kind of tougher. But kidney shot blind. I I had I think vendetta showing so I know when they popped vendetta. Stuff like that. And then again just for fly play plus, in case you're wondering. If you want to add a spell, you just get the spell ID from Wildhead. You put it here, and you can put anything there, change the size, do whatever you'd like to it. And then Big Debuffs is the same way. You go to Spells, you can add custom spells in here. Um, kind of do whatever you want on that. Alright, moving on. Omni Bar, that's what I showed at Kicks. This shows everything here. Um, but these are kind of everything that I do have on there. It's mainly to show Kicks and major cooldowns. So like some major cooldowns, like such as... Um, Combustion I would track, uh, Dress the Goth I put on there, you know, Claw, those are kind of relevant at this point. Bubble I put there so I know if the Pally bubbled. You can put whatever you'd like on there, CCs, you can put, tra I put Trap on there so I know when he has Trap up. 
pretty much anything you, you, you find, but you can go, again, you can go through that add-on to figure that out. They have custom spells, um, and there's a lot of them. This add-on kind of got weird when they put the pre-patch, so you might have to kind of mess around to make it to get it to work right. Um, Trufy's UCD, that's what shows my abilities down here. If you, if you guys are wondering what I use to show my abilities. And then Tell Me When is the last one. So Tell Me When is what I use for this. So it's very similar to Weak Auras. But I just have this here because it just keeps me aware of when I'm in combat or not. So I have it set to just a reactive ability. And it's just Prowl. So whenever I'm in combat... Um, so whenever I'm not in combat and I'm able to press stealth, I'll have that. It'll, it'll, it'll pop, pop up. But if I'm in combat, for example... Find something. See, I'm in combat, now it's not there. And the second I drop combat, it pops back up. So that's just kind of how I can track. Because sometimes, honestly, with Night Elves, I don't know if it's Night Elves or just the game in general, sometimes you bug out and you drop combat randomly. I have, like, trained my eyes to, like, get a really, like, always notice that this pop up, and I'll instantly press Prowl, like, automatically. Um, and then be able to get take advantage of that and get this done. Also, like, uh, one class that's, uh, if you've never played an Arcane Mage, Arcane Mages are probably going to be pretty more, a lot more popular in Shadowlands. You can, uh, if they pop Mass and Viz, this will pop up because you drop combat. That's another useful, really useful part of it, because I played a lot of Arcane Mage. So, uh, again, super useful to me to notice. And it's also good to just watch because, you know, you might pop, you might drop combat in the middle of a CC randomly or... Whatever it may be, just being aware when you're out of combat because it's, it's one, good for preventing getting sapped, and two, take advantage of those stuns. And remember, when you stun, when you use Rake out of stealth, it does a lot more damage. So it's good to take advantage on that. Um, and I think that is about it for everything. That was a lot. But uh, all right, well, that's about it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have more questions, if there's something I missed, please let me know down below. And maybe something you want to see next, how uh, I can help you. I'm here for you guys. And aside from that, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Like, subscribe, follow the stream. Love you. Bye. Here.